Incredibles is the greatest Pixar movie ever. It's about a superhero who saved a guy from committing suicide. That guy didn't want to be saved, so he sued superheroes, causing them to get banned. And for some reason, villains also decided to follow that law. Our hero, Mr. Incredible, aka Bob Parr, could have stopped all this had he came back to kill that man. But instead, Bob grew old and learned the real villains are insurance companies and nerds. We also learn adultery has no consequences. Also, his family's there. It's The Incredibles, the movie, the game on PS2, GameCube, and Xbox. This is on Xbox, but let's pretend it's the GameCube port so we can see that intro. But first, this video is sponsored by the Amino Apps. If you want a place to talk about cartoons, movies, games, whatever, the Amino Apps is for you. You can try the Disney Amino and get into chats, post your art, or answer polls and quizzes. Here's one for The Incredibles. I should know this. I've seen that movie once. I know this. This one, too. Uh-oh. What is Dash's full name? Uh, Dash Parr? How was I supposed to know that? Well, let's see you all do better. You can try to beat my score and the score of other animation fans in the Incredibles Research Club quiz by joining the Disney Amino apps in the links below. While you're there, follow my account, Rebel Taxi. It's the Disney Amino apps. This game plays through the first movie's story with levels based around each of the Incredibles. For the most part, you'll be playing as Elastigirl's bondage servant to Bob Parr through beat-em-up stages. Weak attacks, strong attacks, specials, it's what you'd expect and flows smoothly. Enemies take only a few hits, keeping the pace up in a genre I easily get bored of. Combat here works well, though there's no added combos or upgrades. Outside of that, platforming and puzzle elements are very much like Mr. Incredible in bed. Subpar. Huh? Some sections require you to pick up and throw enemies at power generators. It can get frustrating when grabbing doesn't register, as with this part where you had to bring down these flying robots and throw them at these turrets. It's so easy for these flying robots to fall into the water you're surrounded by, or they just randomly explode with nothing left to pick up and throw. And when you do manage to grab onto these bots, you have to throw them before you're shot at, causing you to drop your bot, which explodes. Had this platform you're standing on been bigger, if they stopped exploding, this would've been fun. But there's so many random difficulty spikes in this game. And then there's other moments where it just isn't clear how you're supposed to progress. About 80% of the platforming works great, except for those random times where your window of timing is so overly precise. Like, if you're one millisecond off from your timing, you're done. These platforms are just one inch away from being too far to jump on. Sometimes you don't fall to your death, you just have to swim all the way back to dry land to do the same platforming again. It ain't helping when the camera controls are inverted or uninverted. Well, which is the one that does not feel right? Because it's that one. There's no menu options to change that, but there is a way to fix it, because it's a frickin' cheat code. Like, they were aware it was a problem enough to make it a cheat code, but they did not make it a setting in the options menu. Who does that? You give out attempts to defeat me! We'll be back with failure! Are you done? No! Not yet! I think you are. But the worst aspect of these levels are the boss battles. They would be fun, but they just drag on forever, padding out this game. It's the same attacks with no deviation, each one lasting at least 10 minutes, if you know what you're doing. If your boss battle is going to go on for that long, change it up, transform, or make a new pattern. Surprise me, these bosses aren't hard, they're time consuming, and there's no checkpoints. So if you die 10 minutes in, right before the final blow, you gotta do it all again. I hope you enjoy fighting the same Nomni droid three separate times. But as long as you learn how to duck and roll, you should be fine. Truly, this is the dark head of Cup Souls. The word filler really comes to mind with this game. Just so much repetition, but it's alright. This mini boss ain't so bad, and I can finally move forward with my life. Are you kidding me? Your mother warned me about days like this. That's right, swing, girl! 
Elastigirl's gameplay is about the same as Mr. Incredible's. Any pros or cons for his repeat here, just with stretchy powers. My plan of attack is to spam the grab and throw button. You can punch them, but nah, grab and throw. That's how Evo champs do it. Oh, send those bad boys are flying. I feel some potential was lost here. They didn't even give her a level where she surfs across the Pacific as a boat. What a wasted opportunity. One advantage to Elastigirl is she can latch onto objects you can swing off of, making the platforming far easier, whereas Mr. Incredible has to put up with this bullshit. Check out these ads. Now, if you want to take a look around the environment, Elastigirl is the only character with a first-person view. I don't understand why. How am I supposed to take some sweet ambient shots with the other characters? Nice. Hold it, free! Dash, run! What? Run! Oh, yeah. What the? They're supers! Get the boy! Show yourself! I'm sure we all know the best scene in The Incredibles was the 100 Mile Dash, both the movie and the video game version. Dash's levels were one hit kill stages where you just keep running forward. It's kind of like an endless runner or Back to the Future on NES where you're unable to stop. It's a good sense of speed. These were a thrill. I love these stages. But what kind of hurts was the sometimes cheap collision detection. <laughs> There is just so many times where I should be able to clear through an obstacle only to get hit by nothing. You get hit by things that aren't scripted to show up until seconds later. It happens on multiple playthroughs. There's only two dash stages, one in the jungle and another in his neighborhood trying to get to school on time. That's not in the movie, but I'll take any dash levels you can give me. Now, this is probably the worst neighborhood ever, excluding the ones affected by Reaganomics. I'm glad Reagan did. This residential neighborhood has 18-wheelers, multi-car pileups, construction on every street, trucks dropping cargo, or just backing out without yielding. And then you got this fire truck that seems to be driving away from a fire that's right there. Oh man, if only there was a superhero to save those people burning alive. I'm sure Dash would help, but look. Education first, you know? He's gotta learn geometry just so he can understand why the GameCube was not actually a cube. It's like the Power Puff Girls tagline, saving the world before bedtime. If the mayor gets captured by one of Mojo's many cock and ball torture devices after 9 p.m., he's on his own. The girls need their eight hours. But damn, what is going on in this neighborhood? Is this Hill Valley or is it hell? No, it's Hill Valley, although I can't imagine hell being much worse. Wait, that's not the right movie. But whatever you do, do not run on the walls in the jungle level. There's some tunnels you're able to walk on the sides of, but it locks you into place. It's hard to explain, but it feels like Dash is just sliding into the last angle you are pointing towards. Any control you have is barely responsive. This is just out of control. If this is part of the challenge, then let's look at the special stages in Sonic the Hedgehog 2. <laughs> Running on the half pipe in that old ass game feels far more natural. You can move freely while also feeling a resistance in your movement. It's a fair challenge until Tails reacts to a jump five seconds later. Yep, there goes my chances of becoming supersonic. Well, would you look at that. It's the Pizza Planet truck, the Stan Lee of the Pixarverse. That van cameos in every single Pixar movie except The Incredibles. It's not in the movie! Fans have tried to find it, but director Brad Bird is the word confirmed. They just forgot to put it in. But hey, the truck made it into the video game, and so did the moving van from Toy Story. There's also a hotel in the background called the Luxo Hotel, as in Luxo Jr., or I guess just Luxo, the lamp daddy. And here's another discovery I made while editing the Dash level. I don't have time to drive you to school this morning. Dash the bus! Okay, Mom! Whoa, lay off the pixie sticks, kid. The way they do that motion blur speed effect is the game in real time renders 2D duplicate images of Dash. Yeah, they're low res, but in motion, you'd never know. Then again, you'd also never know I was sitting behind you, David Smith. I'm not really behind you, David. That was just a joke. But just know, I'm still coming for you. I know you watch these videos. I know you're with Cindy. 
You don't deserve custody. I already know where you are, where your family is, where you like to hang out, what car you drive, what you order from Whataburger. You're not getting away until you return what's mine. Anyway, let's talk about the violet stages. Just in time. Hey, chill out. Oh, there will be consequences. Remember what Mom said? Stay hidden. Last and most likely least of the Incredibles, Violet only gets one level by herself, and it's a stealth mission. All you gotta do is hot damn it. All you gotta do is make it to the end without a guard shooting. God damn it! All you gotta do is make it to the end without a guard shooting you. She's a super! Your only strategy is to turn invisible and walk around the guards when they're not looking. Basic stuff. It's another one-hit kill stage. If you can make it past these archways, you'll reach a checkpoint. The mission is structured in a way that I can just barely make it to the checkpoint a millisecond before these guys give Violet the old John Wilkes booth. You saw me? See ya. Oh no. That happens again and again. The guards hear me coming, my invisibility meter is depleted, so I got no option but to book it and hope I reach the checkpoint before they shoot. Yes, you have the power to turn invisible, but it only lasts seconds. I got no problem with stealth games, but this is never consistent on what objects they can see you through or if the bushes alert them or not. I need a break! This is stealth at its worst. Nobody liked this level. There's a freaking playthrough on YouTube that spent three videos trying to beat the stage for 30 minutes. I don't remember if I ever made it past this mission as a kid or if I just used cheat codes in the pause menu. For unlimited invisibility, type in Tony Loaf. Tony Loaf? She'd eat if we were having Tony Loaf. All right, fill me up with that Tony Loaf. I'm low on protein and high on cholesterol. We got unlimited invisibility. We got this, we're doing it. I'm gonna win. Oh wait, no, the meter is going down, no. You mean it's not unlimited? What the heck, Tony? Tony, I'm coming for you. Lawsuit, bitch. So you gotta put in the code every so often, but I guess this'll do. I don't see why they did this, but it's better than no- Oh, the, the level's over. Here's a completely unrelated cutscene, which leads into the monkey ball stage. How are you doing that? I don't know. Whatever you do, don't stop. Hey. Remember those 10 seconds in the movie where Violet and Dash make a force field hamster ball? Well, they turned that into a whole stage. I'm not complaining, that's good material to work off of. It's fun, except you have this one single ramp at the start where you have to smash the Magnemite on top of it. This is at the beginning, so the stage gets far easier as you progress. What's also unfair is Violet has one level alone while Dash gets two. It'd be fun if Violet could have a mission busting out of detention or avoiding her crush Tony at school, but because the stealth is so awful, let's be glad there's only one Violet level. I've covered the whole family, and no, Jack Jack is sir not appearing in this game. But I think we're forgetting someone else. Frozone is not playable, what the fuck? Then again, do you want to play as a character who looks like a fish from Spongebob? I don't think so. While he's not playable, this game has the money to hire Samuel L. Jackson himself to narrate the menus and tutorial. Come on, I wanna play. I know you wanna play. The whole cast is here, except Mr. and Mrs. Incredible. Hey, if your limited voice acting budget could either go to those two or Samuel Jackson, who would you pick? Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Let's get this thing on! Mr. Incredible has been replaced by Richard McGongall, known for his role as Sully in the Uncharted games, and Elastigirl here is E.G. Daly, as in Tommy Pickles and Buttercup. Bob sounded like his spot on. I never knew it wasn't really him till now, while Elastigirl talks like Jimmy Neutron. Finding bad guys is fun. Hey, that hurt. 
Now, it's easy to look back and say this game's ugly when Mr. Incredible resembles a ripping friend, but the environments are pretty lush. Look at all this foliage. It's one of the nicest jungles I've seen in a video game. Well, for 2004, it's really good. Those water effects look a console generation ahead. Even when you emerge from the lake, his outfit is soaking. And check out this Art Deco city. Call me crazy, but this looks better than the one in the movie. Take a good look at this, and now the movie. It looks like shit. And with Art Deco comes a blimp floating around the city to remind us of a simpler time before Hindenburg. This game has a lot of nice details spread around, like in this level select menu, there's a little map in the corner showing where each mission takes place. You also get a making of documentary and can lock concept art, so now you can stare at this low res image of Pixar's logo. Beautiful. Now, I grew up on the GameCube port, so why am I playing this on Xbox? Well, look at the graphics. The Xbox has widescreen, higher resolution, and better textures. I'm using component cables for each console with the same capture device. I don't own the PS2 cut, but any YouTube clips show it's closer to the GameCube port, which doesn't even have that shiny reflective water. But I noticed this problem. On the GameCube port, there's this tree you use to slingshot yourself across the map. It's clearly marked right there, yet that little marker, the thing you need to progress, is glitching in and out, and sometimes not visible at all on Xbox. How would you guess this one specific tree among the rest of the foliage was important? The Xbox port also got DLC from the now dead OG Xbox Live. Here you download a horde mode. You can choose between Mr. or Mrs. Incredible where you fight through endless bad guys in a small arena. If you played the PS2 or GameCube version, you may be confused because that exact horde mode was already in those ports, except you didn't need to download it from a now defunct online service. That's like stealing someone's bike and pretending to be a nice guy by giving it back to them. Actually, considering the servers are long dead, it's like stealing someone's bike, planning to give it back, but accidentally vaporizing it. I think that's the plot of both Pokemon and Pee Wee's Big Adventure. I guess in 2004, they were trying to impress us with this futuristic concept of DLC but now it's an example of the futility of online servers. So, thanks for that! Even certain cheat codes don't seem to work on Xbox. Where's the fun in that? Let's see what kind of chaos the GameCube can offer. So, if you can deal with no horde mode and some glitchy interfaces, the Xbox version is the way to go! Buy the PC version, dumbass! Trust me, when this game often locks you in a room to kill the same enemies for 10 minutes within the story, you'll have no interest in a horde mode. There's enough enemies to kill. Oh, fuck! Yeah, I forgot, this game is rated T for teen. The 2000s were a strange time for the ESRB. 3D graphics were getting more realistic, so when Mario was punching Pikachu in low-poly 3D, that's an E. Do the same with better graphics, T. Right? Huh. T was me, no. T didn't take no U. Games that should be for all ages like Smash Brothers, Tom and Jerry, Incredibles, and Shrek all got T ratings. Some of these tried to soften themselves up, like for Shrek. He could temporarily knock out enemies, but couldn't kill them. Same for Batman's enemies, except you had to arrest them so they'll stay down. WB even asked the Superman 64 developers to have the game take place in a virtual world so he wouldn't be killing real people, as opposed to a video game taking place in reality and killing real people. On the other hand, The Incredibles, a Disney Pixar game, just said, fuck it. Throw them into electricity, throw them off buildings, throw them into pits of lava, let God sort them out. After a while, this trend of T-rated kids game stopped after the ESRB introduced the E10 rating, which is just stupid. Is there really that much of a difference between E and E10? But let's wrap this video up. They have a the final battle is a third Omnidroid boss. To be honest, this is far easier than the previous ones. Great game design. You just run up and punch him. With his long stretch of road and a giant robot at the end, this is kind of reminding me of the first boss in Metal Gear Revengeance. A true cinematic parallel. I've had enough. It's time we give the Omnidroid a case of mono. Gotcha! 
Oh, okay, it's a mini game. Okay, hang on. You go if you go up, it goes down. No, if you go down, it goes to the left. No, when you go, it goes, goes. Oh, how do I do this? Oh, come on! No! And the game is over. Now you must forever walk the earth while the end credits play. This game was developed by Heavy Iron Studios, who also made Disney Infinity and Battle for Bikini Bottom, a really good 3D platformer. I feel had they gotten more time to refine the Incredibles, it could have been a great game. The potential was there, but it's so riddled with bugs and padding. If you want a better game with super speed and stretchy arm beat em up sections, get Sonic Unleashed. The Werehog stages drag on too long, but it's a little better than this. Now, I haven't forgotten the GBA port of The Incredibles or all the other games. Maybe someday I'll cover them if this video gets enough views or comments. Right now, this video is long enough. So, let's enjoy this clip of Lego Tony Reidinger. <laughs> Rated T for teen. Disney presents a Pixar film, The Incredibles video game. Super strength. Super speed. Invisibility. Elasticity. These are your powers. Bonds, bullets, robots, lasers. Your enemy controls them all. The only way to survive being the Incredibles is to truly be incredible. Coming November 2nd.